f***ing ridiculous. Someone f***ing man up. Gordon Ramsay is a Michelin star chef who has been in the food business for well over 20 years. Plus, his career in television has taken him around the world. So it's safe to say he has seen it all. With his shows, he's attempting to help other people and their establishments thrive, but mostly he's just been subjected to some downright nasty things. More specifically, he has seen some nasty refrigerators. He usually isn't phased about anything, but some of these refrigerators have made him literally throw up the nasty food he just ate at that very establishment. Now, let's get candid, Ramsey is pretty down to earth. He doesn't come off as highbrow or rude, and on these shows, he really seems like he wants to help these people. He wants to save their businesses, but he also isn't a miracle worker. There's only so much that he can do, and no matter what, he always tries his hardest. But some places need to be shut down permanently. Gordon Ramsay and Handlebar Restaurant Okay, um... The fridge at Handlebar Restaurant was atrocious. Even Gordon Ramsay had no clue where to begin helping Chef Melissa and the owner. Ramsay combed through the fridge, finding everything from clams so moldy that they weren't even clams anymore, all the way to dirt caked onto the back of the fridge, simply breeding its own form of life. The stovetop was piled high with black grease, and there was even more in the crevices of every part of the stove. The duo tried to convince Ramsay that not only do they clean their fridge regularly, but that it was freshly cleaned as recently as the week before. Oh, come on. This hasn't been cleaned in years. No, 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 it hasn't. He ended up ordering the owner and the chef to clean the entire fridge out, but not before they tried to appeal to Ramsay's soft side. They wanted credit for keeping the fridge as clean as it was currently. I wish he'd give me a little more credit for cleaning it up as much as I had so far. Which, let's be honest, sounds pretty insane. They were in complete denial that their entire kitchen was overrun by filth and moldy food. To top it off, they didn't even use fresh vegetables. All the owner was worried about was receiving credit for what he had already done. He should be more worried about food poisoning and a lawsuit. Unbelievable. Liking this video so far? Why not click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell? Now let's get on with poor Chef Ramsay's exploits. Chef Ramsay and Fiesta Sunrise the staff of Fiesta Sunrise had a lot of problems. They fought constantly, no one really knew who the boss was, and they were all in denial about the individual parts they played in running a horrific restaurant. It's like the blind leading the blind. The owner, Vic, was kind of a cheapo. He used menus from an old restaurant he had and just covered the old name with some paper glued on that said the new name. But of course, nothing was as bad as the kitchen. The tour of the kitchen started off on the wrong foot right away. The kitchen staff had doubles and triples of almost everything, and no one had an idea which one was the freshest option. Even the most basic and ubiquitous food, green peppers, were moldy to the point where they weren't green anymore. Ramsay couldn't begin to identify some of the food that had gone bad. The beef had oxidized, the fish was so old it dried up and solidified, and the chicken was green and slimy. This is not healthy. No muy saludable. Thank you. There were jugs of solidified food the customers were currently eating. In addition to cursing the dog crap out of the owner. How's it fat, you idiot? It's fatter than you. He shut down the restaurant. Shut it down. Gordon Ramsay and Jack's Waterfront Restaurant. Jack's Waterfront Restaurant may take the top spot for most inauthentic food. From the get-go, Ramsay noticed that a lot of food was being sent back to the kitchen. Oh my god, can it get any worse? Being a chef, he obviously knew this was not normal behavior. So the next day, he spent his time searching what looked like a well-put-together kitchen. But of course, he made some horrific discoveries. What is that? The tuna was dyed pink to look fresher, and there was a gray mushroom risotto that was stuck to the tray and, quite frankly, looked moldy. Scott, the owner, claimed he didn't know what was going on. To his defense, he looked quite shocked. The chicken wasn't pink and plump, and it looked like it was sitting in a cream sauce. In actuality, it had just molded in its own chicken juice. Nasty. To make matters worse, locals were catching fish right outside their door. They clearly had the opportunity to actually have fresh fish every day. The scum and dirt and grit were probably healthier to eat than the actual food. No one wanted to take the blame for anything because who wants to be on television admitting that this monstrosity is their fault? I'm not gonna take responsibility. Chef Ramsay and Oceana the episode that featured Oceana Restaurant was called one of the most explosive kitchen nightmares of the year. 
mainly because the co-owners, two brothers, had horrible tempers. However, their food was disgusting, undercooked, overcooked, or completely raw, and usually just frozen food. For a seafood restaurant in New Orleans, that's just a joke. <laughs> The establishment was full of rats and the owners were very nonchalant about it. We haven't even mentioned the kitchen yet. There were milky crabs in a warmer when they should be in the fridge, gumbo that had curdled and was bubbling, and rancid shrimp. Oh my holy <coughs> Those were just some of the disgusting things exposed. This place was so bad that Ramsey threw up, and it takes a lot for that to happen. The entire fridge had to be considered tainted because of the mixture of food gone bad. There were roach traps and mouse traps all over the place that hadn't been cleaned out. Essentially, the entire restaurant had to be shut down, which caused a loss of money they already didn't have. Shut it down! Ramsey had to bring in emergency exterminators. The kitchen had black, sticky grease almost everywhere. Ultimately, the kitchen staff admitted that they had never had a top-to-bottom clean in the restaurant. Ew, that's gross! Gordon Ramsay and Leela's Restaurant The temperature of Leela's walk-in in the kitchen was 51 degrees Fahrenheit, aka not even cold. We were already off to not a good start with this restaurant. In addition, the executive chef was loud, fighting with waitresses and making up nasty recipes like a chocolate mint lamb. Let's put it this way then. I thought it was a pile of The staff was constantly eating the food to the point where they ran out and couldn't serve actual paying customers. Buzzer! The meat was rotten, the blood had congealed, and the smell was vile. <laughs> Nothing in the entire restaurant was freshly made like the owner claimed. The audacity of the owner to call her restaurant fine dining was downright offensive. Basically, all of the food had to be thrown away and Ramsay had to readjust the temperature in the fridge. All of this sounds insane because there was an executive chef that was supposedly running this kitchen. The owner was clueless to the fact that the chef was doing things his way, like using powdered mashed potatoes. To top it off, one of the staff was caught stealing a lot of food and wine from the restaurant after he left his shift. This restaurant was a complete joke. What, 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 what? Gordon Ramsay and Capri. Grime on the beer shafts and owners who stick their fingers in pots and sleep in their cars. This place was disgusting. And to be honest, we hope it's closed down by now. Capri's is an Italian restaurant. Mamma mia! And the owners didn't know that putting hot, sealed tomato sauce in the fridge can make it go sour. I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Ramsey was literally praying for the customers as they lifted the forks to their mouths. No one had even mentioned if the owners were trained chefs or had any kind of experience in the restaurant business. They admitted that they bought the place because they used to love eating there and now could eat for free. Ramsey stopped the owners from serving lethally contaminated and spoiled chicken. I screwed up. In addition, there were pounds of food in the fridge like eggplant parmesan that was just rotten to the core. These owners were disgusting. We normally don't comment on people's looks, however, these guys just looked filthy like they shouldn't be near a kitchen. They burped out loud in the kitchen over people's food and they never wore gloves. We didn't see a hand wash at any time. Oh my God. Everything they took out of the fridge to serve had either gone bad or was undercooked and couldn't just be rewarmed. Excuse me. Chef Gordon Ramsay and Casa Roma Restaurant and Cocktails. This episode started off with Chef Ramsay having to get rid of a chef who was bringing nothing but toxic energy to an already struggling restaurant. It's a shambles. After that business was done, he was able to have a proper look around the kitchen. Needless to say, he didn't like what he saw. Rotten avocados, open buckets of tomato sauce, and roast beef that looked like it had been there for years. That wasn't all though, it actually got worse. Like the fresh parma ham that was not only caked in mold, it stuck to Ramsay's hand. Even the lemons were moldy and falling apart. This was another kitchen that made Ramsay throw up and basically lose his mind with anger. Me. Keep in mind, we only just mentioned what was in the fridge. The rest of the kitchen was no better. It was messy and had a foul smell every time a new door opened. It was obvious the kitchen staff didn't clean up at the end of every shift. Some of the things shown in the fridge we couldn't even identify. That's how you know you've gone way too far. There was even an entire slab of what looked to be lasagna that we just know they would try and sell later that day if Ramsay hadn't stepped in. Bro, come on! Chef Ramsay and Chappies. 
At Chappie's, even the jarred mayo had gone bad. In fact, Chef Ramsay thought it was mustard because of the pale yellow color it was sporting. The expiration date was 2010, and this episode aired in 2013. Yuck. There was raw beef and cooked beef side by side in the fridge. Not to mention the old cakes that fell apart as soon as they were touched. Ramsay had seen a lot, but Chappie's kitchen really threw him for a loop. What the hell are you doing? The shrimp was so old, it was both slimy and stuck together. Who knew that was even a thing. At one point, he thought there was a piece of shrimp hanging down in the back of the fridge. However, when he looked closer, it was actually mold growing and hanging down from the racks. Upon further investigation, he realized the entire fridge was moldy. When he confronted head chef and co-owner Chappie, all he could say was, Something must have spilled. Something must have spilled. Can you stop the fact that these people think they can fool Gordon Ramsay into believing that their nastiness is a mistake is a complete joke. <laughs> I don't find it funny. Even the freaking potatoes were flattened out from just straight up decomposing. Yet, Chappie told Ramsay that they were fresh potatoes. And even the food stands and storage trays were moldy. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay and the Seascape Restaurant and Tap Room. Chef Ramsay was able to use a spatula to clean the dirt and caked on oil off the walls in this kitchen. Now, that says a lot about this establishment, but it wasn't just on the walls. It was on the floors, under the prep tables, and even on the stove. Ramsay referred to it as larva and a health hazard. It's like lava. And crap. The pesto he had had for lunch just the day before was moldy. It looked like a tapenade before he took a spoonful out and revealed that the dark top layer was actually just mold. Ramsay took time out of his inspection to, one, scold the nasty chef, and two, make the owners aware of just how ridiculous their 95 grade from the health board inspection was. That's 95 out of 100. Right. I really don't think you've got any idea. The chef's excuse for this nasty kitchen was, I'm, I'm just not a throwaway person. In fact, he was so adamant about not admitting that he was wrong that when he was confronted with a piece of sour pork, he said it was for his own meals. Ramsay told him not to eat it, but he said, Probably sour on the outside. <laughs> and surprise, he had already been eating it. Another restaurant so contaminated, it had to be closed down for a few days. You kill whatever customers we got left. Chef Gordon Ramsay and Murphy's Historic Hotel. The name historic is perfect for this hotel. The entire place looked old and not in a fashionable way. The owner knew absolutely nothing about owning a hotel. Been drinking is fun. But like every other place on this list, the fridge was the worst part. Chef Ramsay went into the walk-in fridge and found that literally everything in there had mold on it. Literally everything. Which was shocking because the restaurant part of the hotel was in the middle of a huge dinner service. The fridge was so moldy that even the containers and lids were growing their own mold. The mold was growing from inside to the outside. He was able to slap together tortillas and cough from all the mold coming off of them. <coughs> Bollocks. When confronted, the head chef and his staff, of course, claimed that they cleaned the fridge top to bottom weekly. We'll give it to the owner. He genuinely looked as shocked as Ramsay initially was. Ultimately, very quickly, the head chef began to backpedal, saying things like, Need to toss it, I know that. Even the Thai chili marinade had black mold in and around the container. To make matters worse, one of the owners said that a lot of the sauces had been there from a chef that had been there like in 2006 or seven or something. Great success. Oh, and one of the three owners is so delusional, he gave himself Employee of the Month. It's like dumber, dumber, and dumbest. Before you go fetch yourself a palate cleanser, how about clicking that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell? And while you're here, be sure to check out our other videos.